first world order radio finally finally we are on the air no doubt all right all right there's always gonna be somebody in the building on first world order radio begin on into some of that order consciousness tonight First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. For seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. Peace. Back once again with Dr. Eileen Bay. And tonight's subject is going to be on the power of imagination and mastering your fate. And we're going to get into that particular science of the power of the mind. Because we know that the first of the seven universal principles is mentalism. They're one of the principles of Tahuti or Jehuti, known as Dor within the Greek, or Hermitrides Majestis. For those who don't understand what that actually means, we're not talking about an actual being that existed. It's a concept. Actually, it's a particular concept in which that symbolizes a functioning of the human body. Tahuti actually is the medulla amlegata, which is the storehouse of your memory your past lives, your photographic memory lies at the back of the head. Within the Bible, it tells you the story about Jesus being crucified on Mount Golgotha. Within Aramaic means the skull or the place of the skull. The English transliteration was the word Mount Calvary. So your head is symbolic to a mountain. And the back of it in particular is Calvary, in which that Calvary symbolizes um, a battle or having a particular amount of people or information or ideas for battle. That's what it symbolizes, Calvary. And also, that's in its general sense. Also, we will have to think about the fact that Golgotha in Aramaic means the back of the head or the place of the skull. It just so happened that the medulla amlagata is located in that area. Within Qigong Tai Chi or Tai Chi Kuang, 
you tap on that area at the back of the head in order to scar that area or what is called scarification of the area in order to give you a photographic memory and be able to tap you into the Akashic Records, which is your own personal universal library, in which that is the various incarnations of your past lives in which that taps into your oversoul, in which that is called your monad. This is what is actually symbolic to. So Tahuti symbolizes that. This is why Tahuti within the ancient Kemetic scripts or the ancient Tamarian or Egyptian script, he was the scribe of the gods. He recorded all the deeds of the gods. Within Islam, symbolizes the left and right angel over the shoulders, symbolic to the cerebrum and the cerebellum, or the two cerebellum. And you would turn to your right and say, Assalamu alaikum rahmatullah ta'ala barakatuhu. To your left, Assalamu alaikum rahmatullah ta'ala barakatuhu. Who are you speaking to? There's nothing there. Technically. But you're talking to the aspects of your brain, of your mind. That is Tahuti, the recorder. Within Hebrew, the word go. Q-O-P-H symbolizes Tahuti too, in which that gulp within Hebrew has various attributes. The back of the head is one, skull is another, axe, copy, monkey. What is the symbol of Tahuti? The symbol of Tahuti is a monkey, a baboon. And that's what that's symbolic to. Monkey see, monkey do. A monkey will imitate you. Hence, that was symbolic to a recorder or a copier. That's why the monkey was the symbol of Tahuti. The ipis bird was also symbolic to Tahuti because of the beak or the bill of the bird symbolized. It looks like a writer pen or like a writing instrument. Or instrument of writing which they util, util, in which they they utilized three thousand, four thousand, or more so years ago. This is what people aren't telling you about these characters that they still have you going back worshiping. They just turned your attention from Jesus, and now got you worshiping Tahuti within the ancient Egyptian text, but. There's no explanation of this, just like there was no explanation when you was a Christian. And this is the problem with all of the religions. All of them claiming to have the truth, but yet don't know how to correlate the information back to the human body. So it is no truth, essentially, and in essence, because the supreme axiom is as above, so below, as within, so without. So the number one principle of Tahuti of the seven universal principles, which I'll tell you all seven of them, one is mentalism, two is correspondence, three is cause and effect, which is karma, read what you sow, four is rhythm, five is vibration, six is gender, seven is polarity. Number one is mentalism. The all is mind and everything in the universe is mental. So the power of the mind, the power of the imagination is essential to master. Because everything is mental. Everything is of the mind substance. You draft the elements by via your mind. Your mind is actually the magic wand. And you bring all things into existence. That's what's symbolized within the book of John, where it says that the word made flesh. The word symbolizes the power of sound. Sound travels at 1,120 feet per second. Slowed down from the light frequency of 1,000 of um, 180, um, 6,000 miles per second. 
slow down from thoughts, which, which travels at 24 billion miles per second. So thought slow down is light. Light slow down is sound. Sound for, forms geometrical shapes, patterns. So the word made flesh. That's how we were able to condense from the thought realm, light realm, into the sound realm. And became a tangible thing of sound black mud, as the Quran says. Adam was made from sound black mud. And that's the key word, sound. Within ancient comedic teachings, show you that we was on the potter's wheel being formed by Kanum. Kanum symbolizes the mitochondrial DNA. So you've been listening to a lot of speakers out here, in which they actually have no answers for you when it comes to decoding the ancient mystery school and showing how it applies back to the physical body, and that's the problem. A lot of speakers, but no one is still seeking. In order to be a good master, you must be a good student. And that is the criteria in order to learn how to apply this information. The power of the mind is very essential. Once again, within African or traditions, in particular of um, the Yoruba, it's called Ori. And of course, you have Olodumare or Batala. Shango, Ogun, Oshun, Imiya, Oya, Ishua Legba, and all of these seven powers symbolize Ori in its various aspects. Just like the seven endocrine gland system, or what is known as your seven chakras, or the wheels of light, color, and sound, symbolizes what? The Elohim. Aspect of Elo, your Lord and personal Savior, your God, which is actually your divine soul, your higher self. Which within the ancient comedic teachings is Osa, or Osiris, which is half asleep within your pineal gland, waking to be resurrected and to be able to ascend as the Father who art in heaven. But before that can happen, through various breathing exercises and positions and, and mantras and mutras, you awaken the kundalini, which is the aspect of our sect, the mother principle. As she sends up, she becomes the queen of heaven once again, tapping into the pituitary gland and beaming that white light onto the pineal gland in order to awaken our soul. And in his resurrected state, he is Heru, the Christ, the awakened one. This is what the ancient comedic story was telling you about. When all set transformed into a bird, which is symbolic to the Ba, which is the soul aspect, the spirit, the spiritual soul. And she began to flap her wings over top of the clay phallus on which that was made by Tahuti. That clay phallus symbolizes the pineal gland, in which that the reason why it was lost or eaten is because there are people on this planet who have calcified pineal glands. So you have lost the aspect to obtain, which is the soul principle. You have lost connection to the soul. That's what that story was actually symbolic to. So Tahuti made a clay phallus. And our set was able to transform into the Ba, the spiritual soul, and flap her wings in order to draw forth the essence of life from our soul. Which hence is to awaken the soul. And to give birth to Heru, the awakened one, or the Buddha, as it is called within Buddhism. 
or Muhammad, as it is called within Islam, the one who is worthy of praise. The rule other name is Isa, which is the same within Arabic for the Quran, which is the name of Jesus, is Isa. That's no coincidence. The power of the mind symbolizes the activation of the various mind centers, known as the chakras. With the opening of each one, which is the opening of the seven seals mentioned within the book of Revelation, in the Holy Bible. And I do refer to it as the Holy Bible because it means sun book, or sun pages, or sun papers. That's the actual um, definition, or the raw papyrus. Or the Ra paper Ra, which is nothing more than the Perhem Heru text, the evolution and the rise of Ra. That's where it was drafted from. That's where it's derived from. That's the what is this that's what it is a summary of. This is what they are really talking about. And we got to grasp this. Because everybody went for something to come out the sky in order to save them. Instead of working on themselves. Getting to know thyself. Which is written all over the temple wars in ancient Egypt. That is the criteria. Know thyself and you will know God and the universe. That's what's there. Know thyself and you will know God and the universe. So, the first chakra is open and activated as it moves through the concession to the second chakra, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh chakra. When we get to the elements, you will find out that the first chakra symbolizes the earth element. The second chakra symbolizes the water element. The third chakra symbolizes the fire element. The fourth chakra symbolizes the air element. The fifth chakra symbolizes the ether element or sound. The sixth chakra symbolizes the light element. The seventh chakra symbolizes the thought element. These are the seven elements. You've been taught about four, earth, air, water, and fire. And when they combine... They form ether, so you've been taught about five of them, but you didn't you was not taught about the final two. There's no coincidence that by utilizing an aspect of Heru, who is Shu, Shu was the first begotten son of Atum. Hence the reason why your Bible says that. Jesus was the second Adam in the New Testament because Shu was the first begotten son or the only begotten son of Atum. And hence he himself was called the second Atum. This is not me. This is inside of the Paham Heru, known as the Book of Coming Forth by Day and Night. Misnomer, the book of the day, by A. Wallace Budge. This is how we're going to find the correlations by comparing the stories. You have to be a comparative religious student. You must do comparative religious studies. Compare all of the religions and all of the so-called stories in which that are similar so you can get a fuller understanding, overstanding, understanding of the correlations and the real meaning. Then you take another book, which is called the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, written by Charles Fillmore. Or the 12 Powers of Man, written by Charles Fillmore. Or the books written by Hilton Hotima. The ancient, the ancient, Sciences of the Cosmic Masters. 
the magic wand, the magic temple, the great red dragon, higher consciousness, the secret of regeneration. These are all books by Hilton Otima. Get another book written by Fa Lotus. That's P H Y L O T U S, Fa Lotus. There's several books written by by him, which is of course is a um of course basically is anonymous or acronym, Fa Lotus is. You can get another book written by John P. Scott, The Four Gospels Esoterically Interpreted. You can get another book by um, T. Um, Down called The Bible Myths. These are the books that you need to be studying and reading. So you become more metaphysical and get a clear understanding um, understanding, understanding, understanding of these particular stories. This is what must be done. Then people can jump out and start saying that they're lecturing or that they are um, teaching. But if they haven't put this information together, then they actually are not master teachers, that's for sure. They have aspects of the keys, but they don't have the key in order to explain to you the ultimate truth, which is you. The mystery within masonry is you. Once I realized that, I mean, it became simple to me. Oh, I, oh, damn, I'm the key to make sure? Well, what is it about me? Many just want to go around parody. Oh, arm, leg, leg, arm, head. Or oh, arm, leg, leg, arm, supreme head. I'm God. There's more to it. Shu, which is a form of Heru, because Heru was born from Osa, just like Shu was born for Atun, which is a form of Pata, and Pata Ra is where the origin of the word father comes from, just like the word Mut Ra is where we get the word mother or Mut here. Is where we get the word mother from. These same English words that we are using actually are Egyptian deri- deri- um, derivatives or Tamarian derivatives, comedic derivatives. The word cousin comes from the word consu. So we're still using words today in the English language in which that are um, tied directly back to um, our Egyptian culture or Kemetic or Tem- Temeraean culture here in the Americas. This is why within the state of Arizona, they have found 18 temples all up and down the East Coast in particular from Delaware on up into Connecticut. They found hieroglyphics or metuneta. They found um, Barry Phil, uh, Phil found, um, who's a Harvard professor, found the Arabic, Hebrew, Libyan language amongst the Mi'kmaq, amongst the Iroquois, amongst the Algonquin. Supposedly Native American tribes, but yet they speak in Egyptian tongues. 
comedic tone. African language. And this is what isn't being told. The Albion can take millions of our language away. Our words was encoded inside of the language. There's particular words within the language in which that we still utilize today, in which that is tied back to our culture in Africa, to our African culture, our African mind. What controls the mind, the emotions, is the breath. The breath is the unifier of the mind and the body itself. The destroyer of the ego. It murders the ego. It murders the four devils. It's the conqueror. That's what the breath is. And Shu is the personification of the breath. The personification of air. Jesus' Aramaic name or old Hebrew name is Yahshua. So Jesus is nothing more than an aspect of Shu. He's right there within the Aramaic name. So Jesus never existed, black or white, except within you as a so-called black person or a so-called white person, because you all have the breath of life. And it depends on the way in which that you utilize it in which that makes you a Christ or machine. Or Messin, Mason. A tear of the eye of Ra. Or a child of Ra. Or the children of Ra. If you ever want to blow a fire and make fire high, you have to blow on it. But it has to be controlled. The air has to be controlled. The oxygen, uh, fire needs oxygen in order to build higher. So by you controlling the breath, you build a fire within your body to a higher state. Hence, you activate the Kundalini, which is known as the serpentine fire. Normally, the Kundalini is wrapped three and a half times at the base of the spine. Once again, that's all set. It speaks about the fact that all set journeyed through the seven caves in order to find the missing pieces of Osiris' body, Osiris' body. And the one piece in which that she did not find was the phallus symbol. This is why Tahuti had to make it from clay. To remodel it. Remember, the whole flesh of the body is supposed to be made from clay. The Bible states that within Genesis, the first chapter, that man was made from the mist, which is water, as well as also from the dust of the ground. The Quran says that Adam was made from black mud. Panun is said to have created us on his pot as well, the ba and the ka, the soul and the spirit. Of course, that story was told about celestial dust, not actually the dust of the planet Earth itself, but celestial dust, which is talking about star fire. Hence, 300,000 tons of star dust particles fall to the planet Earth daily. And hence, you yourself, according to quantum physics, you are a walking star. So you absorb this particular energy on a daily basis. But we have lost the science on how to store this energy within our bodies. But it's found within the various practices of the Tibetan monks, Shaolin monks, the Buddhist monks, the Taoist monks, and etc. The yogi practitioners. The three areas in which that you store this energy in, when you breathe in, you store the energy within your navel chakra, 
or right below it, within the back of the heart or chest area, or within the third eye area. When you store the energy within the navel chakra, that extends your life force. Longevity occurs. You live for a longer time period. You strengthen what is known as your ethereal or your civil cord. You thicken it. When the energy is stored within the heart, then you establish love. When it's stored within the third eye, then you establish intelligence and high IQ. So, by the science of breath, which is called pranayama, within the Sanskrit teachings of Vedic or Hindu Kush teachings, the Tamil teachings, the pre Davidians, you have to master breath control, which is called pranayama, which is the ultimate exercise or practice of all of the yogi um, traditions. You have about eight different yogis or yoga Ranging from um, Raja to Tantra or Kriya. Eight of them. And the most important element within each is the science of breath. That's not being taught here in the West. They just teach you the positions or the particular mudras. But don't teach you the particular breaths in which that goes along with these particular techniques. There's something else that we have to master. So Jesus symbolizes that aspect of the shoe, which is the breath. Shoe symbolizes the aspect with his sister, which is tefnut, which is moisture. Shoe means dry or to raise up. What is that being raised up? Because through the breath, the kundalini raised up. Our set is raised up. The soul aspect is raised up, in which that doors within the genitalia area. The energy is raised up. It's called the kunta gland. Within the male is the prostate gland. Within the woman is the G spot. The energy is raised up. in order to break through what is called the ethereal threads. There's 31 nerves in the spinal column and two nerves in which that crisscross each other out. So 31 plus 2 is 33. Also, there's 33 vertebrates in the spinal column when they are fused together and as you become an adult. 33. Hence, Jesus died at the age of 33. That is all symbolic. So as the kundalini comes up through these particular nerves, burning through the ethereal threads, which is the blockages actually, which comes through past lives, um, guilt, frustration, disappointments, etc. This is why you have to be careful about opening up your chakras. There's a system in order to bypass your, your chakra system until you're ready in order to deal with those particular emotions. It's called the cobra breath initiation or technique. This technique is taught by my ma- grandmaster, Sanyata Saraswati. There's seven cobra breath techniques. The first four you get from him. The final three you get from Baba G. But there's seven of them. Very powerful techniques, I can tell you. As a matter of fact, it speeds up karma, your karmatic life, and help get clear the way of all of those disappointments and frustrations and hatreds and greeds and lusts and jealousies and egos. Get a chance to move all of that out the way so that you can become the real you and begin to start developing your golden body, your golden light body. 
which is the final level, at least on this earthly plane. You can do it while still in the flesh or right after you die or, or past form, as they say. Within the three days, the golden body, um, you will ascend with the golden body and the physical body will be basically um, gone. There might be uh, fingernails or, um, or hair and wish that is left behind, but essentially you are gone within the golden body in which that you've developed and which that is the merger of the subtle bodies. This is the reason why you practice Qigong, Tai Chi, Reiki or Pranic Killing is in order to merge these particular subtle bodies together to become a vehicle because we know that your immortal body or bodies are your Aku, your Ba, and your Ka. Those three bodies survive what we call death. That is the immortal part of you. And you can um, have that body as the conscious vehicle. Or you can just simply dissipate and return to the realm of form which is called the collective consciousness or unconsciousness. However, the golden body remains conscious of self-consciousness, self-awareness. The choice is yours. So this is all through the mastery of the signs of breath. And this is the aspect in which that is utilized in order to master the power of the mind and the power of the imagination. With the mastering of the breath, you have seven levels or the seven stages of consciousness. The average person breathes about 18 breaths a minute. If you lower that to nine breaths a minute, If you lower that to 7.5 breaths a minute, then it's 6 breaths a minute, 4.5 breaths a minute, 3 breaths a minute, 1 breath a minute. Those are the seven levels of consciousness. Each consciousness or each aspect of those breaths symbolizes a state of consciousness. 18 symbolizes interpersonal consciousness. 9 symbolizes intrapersonal consciousness. 7.5 symbolizes life consciousness. Six symbolizes subconsciousness. Four point five symbolizes superconsciousness. Three symbolizes magnetic consciousness. One symbolizes infinite consciousness. Infinite consciousness. So if you learn how to breathe at one breath a minute, which is thirty seconds in and thirty seconds out, and you was able to do that for seventy two minutes, you would tap into your higher self the God portion of yourself, and actually tap into the subatomic particles of yourself. At three breaths a minute, your pineal gland is fully activated. And you tap into the atomic portion of yourself. 4.5 breaths a minute, your pituitary gland is fully activated. And you tap into the molecular structure of yourself. At six breaths a minute, you tap into your cellular structure of yourself, which is also dealing with the medulla oblongata area. And it goes on in concession. So this is the way in which that you master the signs of breath. This is what is going on. So Shu, which is Yahshua, Jesus symbolizes that aspect of you. What is the sound you make when you sneeze? Yahshua. Every time you sneeze, you call it on Jesus. 
or his Aramaic name, in which that they derived that from, the sneeze of light. It's a known fact that Atum produced his children from his sneeze. So Atum said, Yashu, when he sneezed, in which that produced his children, Shu, Tefnut, they produced Geb, Newt, Geb, Newt produced or saw or set, set and Nebhet. Geb, um, um, excuse me, um, Osar and Osset produce Heru, and Osar and Nephet produce um, Enpu. But they came from the sneeze of Atum. And the sneeze also symbolizes the semen, in which that is also shot forth from out the phallus. Because the sneeze, as well as, which is snot, as well as also the semen, is nearly identical in a sense because of the sliminess of it. And this is within the ancient comedic Pirum Heru text once again. So the book will come up by day and night. No coincidence that you say God bless you when someone sneezes. Not only do the um, heart stop for that particular moment and you saying God bless you in order to get it back started again because you're about to um, placing a um, bliss or blessing upon a person. Of course, blessing within um, Oxford Dictionary means uh, um, blood sacrifice. We won't get into that. But the Jews say Gehuntite or whatever the case may be. But this is where um, this particular um, story comes from. So Jesus is said to breathe upon his disciples. If you go to the book of John, that's what it says, that he breathed on his disciples and they received the Holy Spirit. So this is very important. This is why God breathed into the nostrils of man and made man a living soul. He told you how to get in contact with him was through the breath, by the breath in which he breathed into your nostrils. He breathed his essence, divine self of God into you. Hence, God is in his temple. Her temple as the soul, which is God. This is what this all symbolizes. This is what this is talking about, y'all. Stop the spookiness. For real. Because it's igamy. Seriously. You know, Islam is waiting for the Mahati. Jews are waiting for the Mashiach. Christians are waiting for Jesus. Everybody waiting for something. When it's always been the forever coming one. The ever coming one. Isa Heru. Isa Heru means the ever coming one. Is why the term return is being utilized by just that I must go and I'm and I will return. Jesus in the second coming. But for the Christians that is. First time coming for the Jews is the Mishak or the Messiah. And then many don't know what Mahati, you know, means. Some say it's the aspect of the second coming of Jesus once again. But the word Mahati simply means guide. This is where the misconception comes in at. This is why the Muslims um, take the Bible and they state, well, Muhammad is mentioned in the Bible, in the book of Isaiah. In which that the word is actually being used is called Ahmed. But because Ahmed was the actual name of Muhammad Mustafa al Amin, Ibn Abdullah, the so called prophet of 1400 years ago, as they state, who supposedly went to Ethiopia and then the name changed from Ahmed to Muhammad, 
which was all a story within itself. Because, you know, Ethiopia or Kush, that they actually were the priesthood of the ancient Egyptians. And they spoke Coptic or Meroic or Moetic, Moeric, M-E-R-O-T-I-C, Meru or Moeric. When they spoke these particular and wrote these particular languages, which is um, the hieroglyphics or the metronets as we know it today, partially. But the ancient or the Ethiopians or the Kushites, as we refer to the mass, the Kushmors, were the actual priesthood of the ancient Egyptians. And so within their tradition, Happy name was called Muhap. Mut. Mu means water. Hot is means as in the flow of the river, the Nile itself. And mat symbolizes the truth. So Happy's name was Muhammad, in which that became Muhammad. Within Arabic, they translated to one worthy of praise. Muhammad symbolizes an aspect of your higher self. Because happy had two selves. Have you ever seen on the walls of the ancient comedic um, hieroglyphs or metronata? You see happy was two selves. He was two happy. Happy symbolized the lower self. Happy symbolizing the higher self. Muhammad was the happy of the north. Symbolizes the higher self. The north as in being the top of your head. The north pole. This is what this is talking about. You can go to the new website. We got a new website for you um, with a lot of this information that we're dropping right here on the radio. You can go to it and um, check it out. www.drarlenelbay. That's D-R-A-L-I-M-E-L-B-E-Y dot com. That's D-R-A-L-I-M-E-L-B-E-Y dot com. And y'all need to go and check this website out because um, we end the religious confusion. All the major world religions, we just take them and wrap them up and show you exactly where it comes from, from out of ancient Egypt, from Africa. And we also break down the fact of what the word Africa actually means. It did not come from Scipio's Africanus. That was a nickname in which that he got for the defeat of Hannibal. That was not his actual name. He was not. He was a Roman. He was not from Af- He was not from Africa, or what became known as Africa. So he could not have given the name to a place in which that he was not from. The word Afra is right there, written on the walls in, in the Metronetra on the walls of ancient Egypt. Af means house, body, temple, flesh. Ra means sun, light, photonic energy. Even the symbol of Ka is there, in which that symbolizes spirit, soul, spiritual soul. So right there, it means the flesh that house the spiritual light. That's what Africa means. So Africa isn't just about being black, so-called black. It means that it houses the spiritual soul, your flesh, your body, your temple houses the spiritual soul, which is God. So Africa is a word in which we can utilize in its original sense. 
but not if you believe through poor research that it means it comes from Scipio Africanus, who was nicknamed Africanus because of his defeat of Hannibal. But that was not his name. That was just a nickname that was given to him because Hannibal was Africanus, was African from Africa. That was an insult. The European taking on the name, just like back in the days, great warriors would um, eat of the other flesh of the enemy, saying to take on the powers of the enemy because the enemy was a, a um, was a tremendous fighter and had a heart. All right, we're going to go to the lines right quick. But before I get there, let's, we had a um, question in the chat room. Um, Brother Mike was asking me about the fact of how to invoke the cosmic energies is real simple. It's through the science of breath. Um, you will actually concentrate your breath as you breathe in, and you will focus your attention at your navel chakra in order to store the energy there. If you have problems doing it, you can take your hands and place them. Um, for the male, it would be left over right. For the female, it would be right over left. Right over the not, um, navel chakra. If you need um, another help, if you have an any belly button, then you can take a penny and put inside of there and focus your energy or attention there. If you have an Audi belly button, you can take some water and wet it and focus your attention there. Either way, it accounts for the focus of attention in that particular area to begin to store the cosmic energy. Remember, 300,000 tons of stardust energy force to the planet Earth daily. You as a melanated being supposed to absorb your share. Yes, I know chemtrails are blocking some of it, but there's still enough in order to get it. So get yours. Know what I mean? <laughs> so, no doubt, we're getting ready to go to the phone line. We got area code 314, area code 314, you're on the air. Islam, boy. Islam, boy. How you doing today, Brother L? I'm doing all right, brother. How you doing, brother Aline? Doing well. All right. Yes, sir. But I was listening when you uh, asking the brother's question about how do you get rid of the uh, cosmic uh, 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 energy. Right. I was thinking when you said left over right. Does that, uh, that also coincide why we uh, have our uh, button our coats over the left and the women both button their coats uh, over the right? I mean, we button our coats over the right, and women both their coats are right over left. Right, right. Well, definitely um, that that would account for the difference, and I'm pretty sure that that is where it comes from, just like, um, you know, within the military, we got left, right, left, you know, and we start off with the left foot first, in which that goes back to ancient Egypt of trampling down evil so that the heart can go forward in righteousness. Right. So I'm pretty right. sure that it came from um, from various techniques in which that we do, because the Muslims or the you know or the Moors or Sufis, they um practice that you know when they um do salat, which is you know the word salat means fire. So it's talking about when you raise the fire within you. So when you make salat, it's actually supposed to activate your kundalini and the particular chakras. That's why you have seven positions in order to stimulate each chakra. This is why um you have you know saja, one of the most important positions, which is the you know. Um, as you're kneeling or sitting in Ruku, you have to bow down your head to the floor, which is Saja, which symbolizes um, the Kundalini and the energy coming down into the head area in order okay. to um, create enlightenment. This is why some Muslims have the dark area there on the forehead, in which that symbolizes the third eye area, just like the um, dot, you know, put within, um, you know, on the Indians, you know, in the Indo Kush region of India, you know what I'm saying? They have the um, dot in which that they put there at the third eye region also. There's seven eyes of Allah as is taught to us within the um, 101 and the 102 or the questionnaire for Moorish American, Moorish children. And it states that these seven eyes of Allah are the seven Elohim. Well, we know them as the seven chakras, but you also have seven areas up from the third eye, which is in between the eyebrows, going up to the forehead area, in which that there's seven particular eyes right there also. So the seven eyes of Allah also symbolizes that particular region. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, between the third eye, which is the um, in between the eyebrows, up into um, the hairline area, in which that is all actually seven of them symbolizes the um, the, the uh, various eyes of a law. Okay. So, it, it, mm-hmm. so uh, when I see some Hindustanis walking around with the red dot dot on their right. forehead, right. That also the symbol of the third eye, right? Right. That's the symbol of the third eye, right? That's okay. The, um, that's that's called the um. Um, the Bindu. All right. So the the Bindu. Um, I think um, well within the um ancient Kemetic teaching, it's called the um the the Bindu. Well, it's called the Bindu within um the Sanskrit teaching, the Bindu, B I N D U, Bindu. Okay. Okay. Right, Got but it. that is within the ancient Egyptian. That is nothing more than the serpent, um, coming out at the tiara at the crown right there, um, at the third eye area right there at that region. So it resurrects, so it's talking about the Kutalini resurrecting right there at the third eye region. Okay. So that's what that is symbolic to. Okay. I know you were saying that uh, Salat means uh, fire. Right. Uh, Salat means fire. I, 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 I always talk, thought it was meant with prayer, you know. Right. No. Salat, um, Dua means prayer. Salat okay. means worship. Okay. Okay, but worship is actually... Um, is the, is the, actually the transliteration because you have the um, decognitive meaning and you have the cognitive um, connotative meaning. All right, the decognitive meaning actually is fire. The cognitive meaning is worship. Okay. In other words, salat means actually work on um, fire. All right. It's, okay. it's actual translation, but it's for, but it's within the fire. The re- the release of the fire is actually through the worship. I guess. Okay. 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 Even if you go to the Hebrew, the word shalah, S E L A H, shalah. They tell you that it means worship, but shalah is the same as the word salat, which means fire. Okay. It's an aspect of fire. Which okay. is talking about the Kutalini fire, which is the serpentine fire, which is comes up through the back. This is why you read this is why you have to do wudu to cool down the body before you enter into the fire worship. Okay, you have, that's to, you, have to, you have to baptize yourself first, just like John the Baptist did Jesus, and then Jesus said, after you know, um, then um, John the Baptist said, after um, I baptize with um with water, um, he will baptize you with fire. Okay, you remember that? Right, I remember that. Right, that's within the um, New Testament, within the Book of John. So Jesus, okay. Jesus will baptize you with fire. That's what that is symbolic to. Remember, Jesus symbolizes the breath. So the breath. When you're doing these particular uh, postures or positions, mudras, you know, um, it taps you into that particular um, element, um, the breath element in particular, too. Because you're, you're, you're reciting words of power. In particular, you're reciting al which the word al means to open. Right. All right. Now, that's no coincidence because... The word within Hebrew is called Anfatika. Anfatika, hmm. which means to open or opening. That's no coincidence because within ancient Egypt, the word is Ptah, mm-hmm. which means opening or the opener. Okay. So when you read al that's what that is talking about, is the open, opening of what? Is the opening of the seven seals, Brother L? Mm. Okay. Remember, the book of Revelation tells you that there's seven seals in which that's supposed to be open. All right. Right? Yes, sir. Which are symbolic to the seven eyes of Allah, which is the mm. seven Elohim. Mentioned wow. within the 101 and 102s. Now, how do you open them? Well, according to Sufi tradition or al Islamic tradition, you read al Fatiha. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <laughs> But the but those seven stanzas, those seven verses, each one of them end with the ein sound. Yeah, they do. 
within Hebrew and Arabic. It's the 16th letter in Arabic, 18th um, letter in Hebrew. All right? It's never, it's never been broken down to me like that. Right. Uh, I'm they not always saying. taught me the prayers. You know, I know. Right. They, right. Uh, they always taught you the prayer, but they never mean, teach you the meaning know. of it. Right. They never teach you the meaning. Right. You right. Right. So Bismillah Ed Rahman Ed Rahim. All right. So Bismillah Ed Rahman Ed Rahim means in the name of Allah, the merciful and the compassionate. Okay. Got or it. the merciful and the in in the sustain of, you know. Then of course, you know, um Bismillah Rahman Ed Rahim. Maliki Yomadin. Maliki Yomadin means the Lord of the universe or the Lord of the boundless universe. Okay. Rabbi. Okay. Rabbi Maliki Yomadin. Maliki. Maliki means king. So the king of the boundless universe. Mm. Or the day of judgment in this sense. It's actually called Maliki Yomadin means the king of judgment. Okay, so I know how to say the prayer, but right. I never did go to the real meaning of it. Right. They, well, they, they never go to the real meaning of it. Right, that's what I'm trying to convey to you now. Yes, and sir. So, You're doing a good job of them too. So, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Maliki Yomidin, Iyaka Nabudu Wa Iyaka Nasein, Dina Sarata Mustakim, Sarata Le Dina Sarata Alehim, Gada Makdubi Alehim Wale Dolin. All right. All, mm-hmm. of, all of that symbolizes those seven stanzas, which symbolizes the activation of each of the opening of the eyes of a law. Because the word ayn, within Hebrew and Arabic, symbol is an eye. One eye, brother um, L. Yes, sir. So each time you end, in, 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 that symbolizes the opening of that particular sound, means the opening of the, one of those chakras. So uh, when, when they, when they, uh, when they do prayer, when they have the left hand with the right, right. the hand turns to the head turns to the left. Mm-hmm. Uh, Muhammadin Rasulullah, assalamu mm-hmm. alaikum. Right. Rah- Rasulullah, assalamu alaikum. When they turn to the right, right. Assalamu what does that signify? Right. Mm-hmm. What What does that signify when they turn well, their head? That goes back to what I was saying. When you turn the head to the left and to the right, symbolizes the activation of the um, um, cerebrum, which is okay. known as the cherubim. The two cherubims. There's, go to the Old Testament and it speaks mm-hmm. about the Ark of the Covenant being guarded by the two cherubims. The Ark of the Covenant is actually your pineal gland and inside of the Ark is the law of God, which is actually your soul. Mm-hmm. All wow. right? And mm-hmm. also that was in the Ark was the Staff of Moses, which symbolizes your spinal column. Remember? Moses okay, sure does. Old, Moses took the rod and threw it down in front of the Pharaoh and it turned into a serpent. Well, what right. do you have within your body in which that is called the serpent? It is known as the Kundalini, which is called the serpentine fire. In which wow. that comes up through what? The spinal column. Wow. You ain't talking about the energy there. Right. And that's what split the Red Sea, because when it gets at the heart chakra in which that do um um the heart, the heart splits the Red Sea. The to and fro motion of the beat of the heart is what splits the Red Sea, which is your which is nothing more than your blood system. Your blood supply in your body. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's what the that's what the story was actually was talking about. Like I say that you know when I was uh active with the nation of Islam, they never I mean they already taught you the prayer but they never go into the science of like you did. Just did. Well no. that's, that's because they don't know. And that's the problem. That's the reason why you can't follow anything in which that you can't um, that you can't rationalize. Okay. In which that doesn't make sense to you. Right. You keep it moving. Every time that happens, you keep it moving. If if you can't find the answers that you that you need for your soul development, because this is about your soul. The more information your soul can gather within the various life aspects, that means that the less of a chance you have to come back here to reincarnate. That means that these people who are supposedly about soul saving, but yet have no answer for the soul, actually are doing a detrimental thing to the soul, really. Huh. They're really doing a detrimental thing to the soul. Because they actually are trying to hold the soul. Actually, what they end up doing is holding the soul down and keeping it from wow. being developed. 
because they don't have the answers to the soul um, development. And the soul wants to develop. A, high, uh. a higher being wants to develop and don't want to come back and incarnate back into a third dimensional reality. They want to go into higher realities. Right. Or what is called apparent reality. They don't want to do this. They don't want to keep doing this. I don't want to keep doing this. I just came back this time to do my mission and keep this shit moving. There you go. As many of us are. And that's what we have to keep realizing and thinking to ourselves. All right, I'm just here right now. I'm going to keep it moving. Okay, well. Yeah. Because the more is not just navigators of the sea. We also are the charters of the, of the, um, of the sky, too. In other words, we're the navigator of the planets, of the stars, the moon and stars, and the suns. You just got to know how to utilize those energies. Exactly. So wow. We're the navigators <laughs> of the cosmos, too. Not just the um, sea. And not just more named after the land. But, okay, we, but, we, but we, land, we, water, we, and but land, air, and water, which is law. L-A-H. I mean, L-A-W. Law. Land, okay. air, and water. Does that have anything to do with the word Lord? <laughs> exactly. Okay. Well, I was told that it don't. Oh, um, that's because they're looking at it from the way in which that is translated from the Hebrew, which means rabbi, in which that can also or either Adonai. But even okay. the word Adonai come from the Hebrew, from the Arabic, well, Adonai comes from the ancient Egyptian word Atan. Okay. In which that was the sun disc. In which that's the same sun disc in which that you see with the wings um, expanding from it on the caduceus, or what is called the uraeus. So, so when they say you baptize by fire and the uh, other one baptized by water, uh, that's uh, the opposite of the two elements, or the four elements right. of the universe. Right. Okay. Right. That's hydrogen. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Hydro means water, right? Right. And gin means fire. Okay. Oh, man. Okay. Uh -huh. Oh, oh man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're going we gonna to explain everything, God, because that's, that's what I have to do, because I, I can't play with my soul. That's why I can't follow none of these Negroes, because they don't have right, the No, answers. no, no. Uh-uh. If they, oh, hell no. If, if, <laughs> if it looked like they had the answers, then I'd be right there. But since it doesn't look like it, I... I, I I got to go with my um my own um soul force. Okay. And okay. I recommend that everybody do the same thing. And then as we all, you know, master our soul forces, we can unify at the soul level. You know. But right. right now as people are searching and, and looking, you know, then they you know, that still shows confusion in a sense. You know. So in order to eliminate that confusion, you, you have to master self. That's why um, Noble Jali said, you know, um, well, what to study? Self. Well, what's the study after you, you study self? Oh, some more self. That, that's the answer. You, you, it's about studying self, no matter what. Right. Hmm. Well, like I said, I'm still learning more of man. <laughs> oh, it's all right. Yeah, we, we all still learning. I mean, that's, well, you broke down that prayer like that. Yeah, well, I mean, that, that's that's <laughs> key. So that's the reason why, you know, within that's why you have to study not just Islam, you got to study Sufism, because within Sufism, it tells you what this really means. Okay. You get the answer within Sufism. You don't get it within our Islam. Okay, because I never it really is, studied it, Sufism. Right. So that's the what? But Sufism is more science. Exactly. It's not our Islam. That's why he made a distinction. Oh, we study Islamism, because that's Sufism. That's not that's not regular Al Islam of the Arabs and their Arab traditions. Mm -hmm. We explain what we can do. We explain what we do on a daily basis. We explain the reason why we um, um, wash ourselves or purify ourselves before we go into um, Salat, which is fire. Before we get baptized by the fire, we have to get baptized by the water, because it cools the body down. So that when the fire comes, it don't over, um, um, it don't burns out our circuitry. Right. Which is our, which is our nervous system, and we can commune with Allah. 
This is this is the reason why for the um night of um mirage, um of the night of power in which that Muhammad had when he went uh, when he ascended up on the Baruch into the seven heavens. The he- seven heavens are symbolic to the seven chakras, and the Baruch is symbolic. And all, yeah. Right, right, and so and um Baruch is symbolic to the Kundalini. So when he said Al Fatiha, you mean the, up, the opening of the seven seals? The opening of the seven seals, where Al Fatiha means the opening. The opening of what? It, 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 I would never explain to me like that. Right. The, <laughs> books mention, the books mentioned within the last book from before the Holy Quran, before that chapter, which is the first chapter of the Quran, which used to be the fifth chapter, but before it became the first chapter of the Quran, what was the book prior to that? What was the last book right before that? It was the book of Revelation, which is the book of Injil, which is mentioned in the Holy Quran, which is, you know, misnomer the Gospels, but actually is the book of Revelation. Okay. So the last book in which that before you get to the opening, uh, Al Fatiha is the opening of the seven seals mentioned in the Book of Revelation, the Injil. Then I gotta read that Quran some more too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, the word Holy Quran actually means sun cycle. It means what? Word, now? It means sun cycle. The Quran, the book, the Holy Quran is not is a is an astrology book. As above, so below. As within, so without. <laughs> yeah, because I know we're always speaking about the sun and moon and stars. Exactly. It's a sun book, and it's a story. In the stories in it, you go to the third um, chapter of in Graham, It tells you that portions of this book is allegorical, and Allah knows the um, meaning of the allegorical parts, and those. Men of knowledge. However, men have take other men have taken this allegorical part in order to give it their own interpretation, and therefore Allah seals their hearts. Mm-hmm. And this is what is going on. These these people on this planet have taken the allegorical parts of the Bible of the Quran, and they have and they have given them given it their own interpretation. Mm. And can't explain it properly to the person who's trying to actually have their soul saved. Which the only one who can, the only way you can save your soul is actually through yourself. It's through your own enlightenment. You know, through that light bulb coming on over top of your head. You know. Mm-hmm. So I mean, that's the only way in which that can happen, brother. Whoa. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh man. All right, hold on, Brother L. We're going to go okay. to the caller here. We got area code 205. Area code 205. You're on the line. You're on the line. Peace. Peace, peace, peace. I'll leave you. How you doing? Peace. Okay. All right, all right. Um, I had a question. Um, we off into um, Revelation of the St. John, um, first chapter, um, 14, 15 verse, and it states that his head and his head were light. Um, excuse me, his head and his hair were white like wool, as white right. as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. And flame of fire, right. I can, right, and his feet unto fine brass, and if they burn in a furnace, right. his voice has the sound of many waters. What is it actually that he's talking about? All of that is talking about basically um, the, raise, the, the raising or the ascension of the Kundalini energy. The woolly hair symbolizes, of course, um, people of African descent, because we're the ones in which that put that book together. Like I said, the Ethiopians were actually the high priests of ancient Egypt, in which that that information, the Bible, the Quran, all of that was taken from out of the ancient Egyptian texts, or the, what is called the Bahamahiru text. You know, of course, you can go to Egypt and see the woolly hair all over the place on the hieroglyphics, or what is called the Metronephi to this day. So that was symbolic to the person who was enlightened was the woolly hair. That's what that was symbolic to. And if you want more proof of it, look up the word Sufi, and you will see that word Sufi means wool. But then they would try mm. to tell you that wool is talking about a cloth or some type of um, coat, when actually it's in reference to the hair. Mm. You know, so when you look at the word Sufi, which is the mysticism of our Islam, it's talking about the people. So in this particular case, um, the woody hair symbolizes the people. But if you look at a hieroglyphics or the metroneta of the shoe, shoe has woolly hair. 
Shu has on feet as if he's burnt in the furnace. Hmm. Shu is depicted as a um as a Moor or as a so called black man. But yet he is the personification of air. So am I supposed to believe that this man symbolizes the personification of air that this man flows through me? Only in the sense of fallen manta. You know, um you get the story in the old testament about um man of falling from heaven. And us eating this manna that falls from heaven. That is talking about the cosmic energy, that fire. You know? So, I mean, it, it's a, it's, we're talking about various interpretations, but when you look at the image in which that, that particular passage was taken from, that is the image of Shu. You can look up Shu right now, um, S H U, right now, um, go to Google, put in the name Shu, and then press image. And you will see actual depiction of Shu as a black man with woolly hair. F H U. Yeah, S H U. Hmm. Now, if you go to my new website, I break this information down in detail. That when Arias Pisos or Pisos got the information, he played himself as Josephus Flavius, the first century historian, when he was related to Hedrod. All right, and he was also related to the Ptolemies or the Ptolemies, and he was able to go into Egypt and copy these stories down, and he made them into what is now known as the Holy Bible, or what is known as the New Testament, particularly. So the images in which that he used was the images in which that he seen right there off the walls of ancient Kenya or the Metsu And like yeah, you said, sense. Jesus, which is the Aramaic name Yahshua, is where it was taken from Shu. Mm-hmm. Now, the Old Testament deity was Yahweh or Yahweh, and then the New Testament deity is Yahshua. So, in the New Testament, they added Shu into the center of Yahweh or Yahweh. That means in the Old Testament, Yahweh symbolized Geb and Nut. Because in the um, intercommetic text, you'll see Yahshua or Shu in between Geb and Nut. In the later scene on the walls of ancient Egypt. In the beginning scene, you'll see Gad with the penis erected going pointing up towards um Nuke, which is the sky god or the sky god. But then in the next scene you see Shu in between both of them. This is supposed to be the separation within the Bible in the book of Genesis where it speaks about of the water uh, from the fundaments of the air. Or the fragments of the sky. The gap symbolizes the earth itself. So this is where these depictions come from. That we talk about with the Old Testament and the New Testament. is right off the walls of ancient Egypt. But like I say, put Shu in within um, Google. And you'll see a depiction of Shu. And it's a black man with woolly hair. And so you'll, up, see, right, so you'll see exactly where that um, depiction comes from. And that reference right there within Revelation. Wow. Okay. You got you got another question, brother? Let's see. Oh yeah. Um. Also, too, did you have mentioned um that um males go right over left, right, and females left over right? Why right. in particular? Why is it to um them right over left and females over right? Um. Because. Um. The, the hand positions symbol, the hand symbolizes masculine and feminine, you know, um, and you're looking at the brain. So, like for example, um, the left side symbolizes the feminine, the right side symbolizes the masculine. So the feminine goes over top of the mas- masculine for the male, and then um, the masculine goes over top of the feminine for the woman. They represent electrical and magnetic properties. Left hand symbolizes magnetic, right hand symbolizes electric. Hmm, make a lot of sense. Okay, that, so that's, that's how that goes. That's why if you write left handed, the right cortex of your brain is activated. If you write right handed, the left cortex of the brain is activated. You see? Right, right. And um, in your book too, um, 
I think it's page 303 when you talk about the um the um seven ways of following your breath. Um, right. When it go from eight when it go from eight to minutes, so you must master um you, know, you say the levels of it first, like the first level to the second level, the eighteen on and right, on up. Nine, right, seven point five, six, four point five, three, one. Right. Hmm. And by mastering right, each right. one, you can tap actually into those particular levels of consciousness, which is um, beta state, alpha state, um, beta state, theta, um, delta theta state, theta state. You can tap into these various um, states of consciousness. That's what they call within psychology. Okay. All right. Um, we're going to area code five one two. Area code five one two. You're on the line. Peace. What's Peace. going on, God? Peace, Doc. How you doing, God? Peace. Yo, I'm doing good. I I never felt this much energy. I mean, it's my birthday, but I never felt this much energy this year. Word. That's good. That's good. And also, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Oh, thank. You. Thank you so yeah, much. Happy Earth Day. Happy oh, Born Day. Earth Day. Solar Day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, um, basically it's like when I'm in the dark, right? You know, when I'm in the dark, and I, I've learned to to really enjoy it because I get deep meditations in the dark, but it's like I'll see, um, like, figures or... I'll see more like materializing or like seems like figures and like shadowy kind of figures like looks like it like when I'm in the dark. You know what I mean? Right. Do you know what that is? Yeah, those are shadow beings. Um, are are they are they nice people? <laughs> Well, shadow beings are, are, are what is called ghosts. They're the remnants of the shell um, in which that, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's actual energy, what is called remnants of actual energy in which that is dissipated. Okay. So, so they appear to be dark, you know, hence, you know, shadow beings, which is basically ghosts. So, you know, if you want to get rid of them, you just simply say "be gone" or say a prayer, or whatever the case is, a positive affirmation. Yeah, you know? well, I'll tell you this because I don't know now. You know how they had in the Book of Genesis, they said it was Adam and Eve, right? Yeah. So what it was, I don't know. I was really interested. I was listening to Panic show. And Panic was talking about a succubus. Right. And like. Ever since I was younger, like, I always had this fascination with the succubus. And uh-huh. so what Panic would say is if he wants to call upon a, a particular energy, what you would do is read the mythology or whatever, and then you can harness that energy, right? Right. So I called on a particular one. The name was Lilith. And... Mm-hmm. I didn't necessarily have the most pleasant experience from that one. Right. Well, neither did Adam. Neither did Adam, according to the Jewish law. Um, Adam tried to um, put in a missionary position, and she said, I'm not going to be dominated or be up underneath a man. And so um, because of that, uh, she transformed into a demon um, ever Mm -hmm. since, allegedly Mm -hmm. according to the story. So, man. But, I mean... Do you think there's any way? Because I mean, I know some people have worked with her and they had positive experiences, or whatever that is, or if that's just a form of melanin. I mean, um, I mean, that's all. Mel- that's all Lilith is. Is is talking about um, the escape of the ego. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, not to want to surrender or submit onto your onto your higher self. So hence the ego becomes demonified. The ego becomes, you know, the demon, you know, when it is utilized more than the higher self and when there's no balance or when 
the lower self is not murdered and submerged or emerged into the higher self. So that's what, in a sense, that also means about Lilith. You know, the aspect of dark side of yourself. You know what I'm saying? So if, right. you're not able, so if you're not willing to work, work with it and correct your ego, you know what I'm saying, then, of course, you know, it can, you know, look at something else or, you know, become something else. Like you said, not be so pleasant. You know what I'm well, saying? Work with it. Yeah. Me, me, personally, me, me, me personally, I, um, I don't, right. you know, me personally, I just simply call upon my ancestors that I do know of. Mm-hmm. Who he did? Who changed my shitty ass diapers? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> who, who, who said, yeah, yeah, who yeah. Said, you know who said that they love me? You know what I'm saying? Who gave me money? Who gave me food, clothing, shelter? Mm, right. To the people that I call upon at my altar. You know anything else outside of that? You know what I'm saying? Um, to me, or just mere thought form. Now everything is a thought form in a sense because um, man is nothing more than the thought of a law God than flesh. Right. That's what a prophet well, is. That's what an angel is. All of that is nothing more than thoughts garbed in flesh. So these particular entities exist now because of the minds of men. We have thought these things into existence, and they dwell on the first and second overtone <laughs> of the um, astral plane. The astral plane. Right. But that's the yeah. first and second overtone level of the astral plane. But there's seven levels up to the astral plane. So they dwell on the lowest level of the astral plane. This is where the fairies and the, um, um, the monsters and the extraterrestrials and all these other beings and entities reside at. I see. Okay. Yeah, well, that makes that makes sense because well, I just got um, just one more thing to say. It's like the it's like I did submit to it, and I guess you know it was something I expected. It was uh, what they call a succubus. So right. but then you know it was like. It, it was, um... Is this your section? I just felt like a little... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it, well, and, you know, it, I mean, it just seemed like a lot of my energy was gone by the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that's what happens. That was the talk about. Exactly. Wow. But why give your energy away to a thought form? True. Well, you know what I'm saying? I, I mean, mean I would, I would don't don't looking. don't you have something to do with your energy? You know that you might want to produce your own thoughts with, besides for tapping into somebody else's thought. Right. Of course, the thought of Lilith existed for at least four thousand years, according to the Bible, because yeah. Lilith was the was the um, wife of Adam before Eve, according to the Jewish law. Okay. So and that's tap, the reason so, why it exists. Right. So you tap into so, into somebody else's thoughts. Tap into your own. Come up with your own. <coughs> if you want to have sex with an entity, I'm pretty sure you can think of a hot, tempting female to do that with. Yeah. In your mind. Well, I mean, I mean, you see where I'm coming from, right? Right. right. That's <laughs> so I mean, you can you can do this yourself. You don't have to be. <laughs> you don't have to tap back into some thought of of a nigga from four thousand years ago. <laughs> no. Right. Right. <laughs> All right. Well <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I appreciate that. It was good um talking to both of y'all and um I'm ready whenever you're ready to work on that joint, Elaine. No doubt. All right, you take it easy. All right, peace. Peace God. Peace God. All right, we'll go to every code three four seven, every code three four seven, you're on the line. Three four seven. Peace. I, yes, good night to you as well. Great show. I want to I want to talk, ask you two questions. One being about the, you know mind control in the body, and about hypnosis. You know, it's being said more and more that instead of people receiving um, painkillers or anesthesia in, at the hospital, they're receiving hypnosis to control pain or to minimize pain or to eradicate pain. Do you believe in that concept that you can go on the hypnosis, be yes, hypnotized? That, yes, that is true, but I would rather do it myself through self-hypnosis, not through someone else um, putting their thought within me. Mm-hmm. Oh, and see, okay, and see, okay. And see how you would do that is get a recorder. And right before you go to sleep, 
you will play what you're saying on the recorder to yourself while you sleep. So therefore, it goes into your beta consciousness. That sounds better to me. Yeah. Right. It goes from your beta consciousness <laughs> to your alpha consciousness, and then yeah. into your delta consciousness and theta consciousness. So it goes deep into the it goes into the dip, deeper levels as you you know go from consciousness, which is um, beta, into alpha, which is goes into the subconscious. Of, you know that that's that little trance state where you can still see and hear things, but you're like dozing off, you know, going to sleep. You know, that's that particular stage is the alpha stage. That's the stage you do the programming at. And so you can get your voice to play your own voice and self and self hypnotize self hypnotize yourself, you know, at that level, then you will not experience pain. So do you believe so what about the you know, the after effects? Like after like say for example you're going for to to remove your appendix or something like that. Mhm. And like you said, you know, record your own voice the night, the night prior to the surgery. Mm-hmm. What about, you know, let's say two hours to three hours after the surgery, will you start to feel the pain then? I mean, how does that work? Um, it depends on how much endorphins it is that the body is actually producing in order to stop feeling the pain, in which that comes through the self-hypnosis in which that you did the night before. So if you want to reinforce that, then you can, if that's what you mean. Mm-hmm. That can always be reinforced. The self-hypnosis can always be reinforced. Um, wow. Through, through positive affirmations, through prayer, through um, decrees, it can always be reinforced. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's enlightening. Wow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, of course, you know, the... the I want to, um, of course, ask you about next week if you have an opening at nine o'clock yeah, spot. Yeah. Yep. About no, um, we'll speak upon the, in, the importance of digestive enzymes. Okay. Well, yep. Come on at nine o'clock. All right. Thank you. Have a good night to both of you. You too, now. Well, you too, now. Peace. All right. Eric Cole nine one. Eric Cole nine one six. You on the line? Peace. And I can't wait to see them. Nine one six. Peace. Peace. Greetings. Ali. Yes. Okay. I guess you're not there. Okay. Let's go to the chat room here. Let's see if anybody's building in there. Right. Um, I guess we get back to the subject. You got anything else you want to build on, Brother L? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, I was listening to you talking to the brother about self hypnosis. Right. And uh, yeah, I do think that'd be better because that'd be your own uh, thoughts to be put into yourself. Right. Exactly. Your own, your own words to be said to yourself, to someone right. else. And right. And who consciousness? You know, I mean, your voice, you know, to your own consciousness is the most easy accessible. Is the easiest to get in. Cause it's you. It's, it's the sound of your own voice. There's nothing in which that beats it. Okay. You know. Like, like, like they always tell you, you know, it's up to you to do this, and up, up to you to do that. You know. Right. You know what they say: the kingdom of heaven is within, but then you. Exactly. Okay. <clears throat> exactly. So that's, Luke, that's Luke seventeen twenty one. The kingdom. Do you not know that the kingdom of God is within you? Exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Because um, uh, when you really uh, under hypnosis of someone else, and you listen to his words, uh, what he's putting into you, into your head, you know, and so therefore it, it seems so, some like almost like artificial than it is real. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, it's coming from somebody else other than you. Right. Right. I mean, right. you try to. You trying to awaken the aspect of your own soul, the who voice or the sound. Remember, we just broke down sound earlier. That sound is an aspect of light and thought. Mm-hmm. Slow down. So, you know, it's a light is light and it's and it's thought. You know, 
for, you know, slowed down into physical form or what appears to be physical form. <coughs> you know, I mean, and we're not, you know, totally physical beings in a sense or, you know, solid beings in a sense because actually we're, we're 75% water, so we're more so aquatic or liquid beings. Right. You know, then we are solid, which is only 25%. Right. You know, so, I mean, that's what people have to understand, too. You know, and water deals with the emotions, deals with truth. Matter of fact, um, Masato Emoto, Japanese scientist, did a study on the aspect of water and how to have 400,040 um, 40, 400, channels, 44,000 channels uh, within it of memory. Mm. That's what they found out, that water has 44,000 yeah, 44, um, memory channels in it. Well, that's so, a lot to tune in on. <laughs> yeah. So, so if you think about, you know, we talking about hypnotizing yourself, you know, you tap into those channels within you, you know what I'm saying? Then you can produce the healing that you want. All right. You know, within the body. And that's, and that's the key, too. And, you know, uh, shoot, I got to follow that, you know, myself because um, that is the best way to do it, you know, is to use your own voice, you know? I mean, there is there is nothing else in which that is better. Yeah, that's not, like I said, that's something more better to me, and mm-hmm. plus that, that takes a lot of practice. Right. You know, but it, but to me it don't seem like it, it, it should be that hard, though. Right. Since you're dealing with the self. That's true. You know, your own voice, your own words, your own mind. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. Right. So um, I was thinking about the caduceus as well. Uh huh. When you saying left, right, left, right in the military, uh, right. could, that, could that also correlate to the caduceus, the two uh, serpent snakes? Exactly. Okay. And it does. And that brings in balance also. Right. Exactly. Um, bringing balance between the male and female, masculine and feminine. You know, positive, um, negative, you know, electrical, magnetic. It brings in those aspects. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> so what, I forgot, I couldn't hardly hear when you said, when you said, uh, Holy Quran. Quran means what now? Right, the Holy Quran. You know, the word Quran means cycle or to recite. Which means a pattern or okay. a cycle of time. The word Quran is derived from the Latin word chronos or chronology. What's chronology? Chronology means what? An aspect of time. So the Holy Quran deals with an aspect of time. This is why um, in the nation of Islam, you were, you was taught that the Holy Quran is twenty five thousand years renewal of history. Right. Right, I was. Right. Now, they did speak on that. Right. They did teach that that much, yeah. Right. The Holy Quran is 25,000 year renewal of history. Well, what is 25,000 years? 25,000 years is the sun traveling through the 12 zodiac signs, a constellation. Right, it's an age. Right, it's an age, or what is called a great year. Okay. So, the Holy Quran symbolizes a time span. Chronology, time. Mm. Chronos, which is what? Take it from who? Heru. Which is Heru the Elder is Asa, Father Time. Mm, mm, mm. Mm? <laughs> so this is where all these stories come from, Brother um, L. Everything goes back to Egypt. That's the oldest place we can find these mythological stories that still um, inform that we can see and study and, see, and, um, and understand how um, they apply to our lives today. Right. Yeah, I was also discussing with a brother. Uh, he's, a, he's a brother Mason. Right. And he was saying that the word more, uh, he 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 sees the word more as one of the Moors rule Spain. Of course. That's but what most people see it. I said more go back further than that. He's, he's, right. He, he, more science and uh, the comedic mysteries are both one and the same. Right, but even then, even if it meant Moors who ruled Spain and Portugal, um, explain to me why we're still not using that word today on a massive level. <coughs> you know, 
because the Moors supposedly left. Some went back, you know, into Africa. Some journeyed into other portions of Europe. You know, some allegedly came here to the Americas. But right. if we're talking about Moors in that sense, then we missed the whole point. Because there was Moors who journeyed here from out of um, Mali, known as the Omex, or okay. the Mandingos, or the Mendes people. And they was here over 5,000 years ago, right here in the Western Hemisphere, out of Mexico, the Yucatan Peninsula. Or the Mexican, or the Gulf of Mexico, as it's now called. Okay. And they came from out of the interior of Mexico up into... Um, the southern area and the eastern seaboard region, all the way out to the Great Lake region. Okay, I know it, I know it, it's the ancient word. Right. Uh, I, know, I was trying to tell this uh, brother. Yeah, the, you know, word, the word more means high priest of Anu. Um, is it, actually um, is a um, hieroglyphic or the Metuneta word, and it was spelled M A U R um, S more. Oh, okay, so that's right. how. The, a white island got his name Maui. Yeah, exactly. That's how they got the name Maui. Mm. Exactly. Wow. <laughs> and that's why they say, uh, what, what's the word um, they say to this day when they greet you? They say Islam more. No, no. I'm talking about what uh, they say in Hawaii. What, what they what they say when they, uh, when they greet you or greet you? Um, Aloha. Aloha. Yeah, right. What what does that mean? What does that sound like to you? It sound like they said Allah you get or it. something. Uh, Allah. Allah. Right. In other words, I'm greeting you with what I see within you. In other words, it goes back to what they say Jesus said. When I see you, I see the Father. When you see me, you see the Father. In other words, when oh. I see you, I see Allah. When you see me, you see Allah. So I greet you, Allah. Aloha. So when I see Hawaiians or when I see uh, so-called Samoans, are they are they considered Moors? Samoans or Moors? Okay. Matter of fact, you can go back to um the um early 1900s, late 1800s, and go further back into the 1700s, and you see that they are Moors. They are black people. They're so-called black people. They look just like you and I. No different. Matter of fact. Um, the last king, um, Kamei Kamei, um, the last king who actually was the last king, he unified the kingdom of Hawaii. And I know um his great 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 grandson. Um, I'm um he he comes to my lectures when I go to New York. And guess huh. what he is? And guess how he looks? He looks like, like you and I. You you can't tell. Um, um, he's no different from you and I. He looks so called black. But he's the great 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 grandson of um Kamali Kamali. Man. So, I was one hey, I'm, go ahead. Mm-hmm, go ahead. I was wondering, you know, uh what they consider Moors as well, you know, because uh, I know they were pretty, you know, uh, what you say, kind of dark in complexion. And right. I said, they, they kind of, you know, I said, well, wait a minute, they look kind of like, they look almost like us, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I got plenty of pictures to um, show that. Matter of fact, you got my book. Um, yes, sir. Yeah, look up in there. I got um the um I got him and her, um the last queen of um of um Hawaii and um the first king of Hawaii who unified the kingdom of Hawaii, Kamai Kamai. Okay, I got to read that over again. Yeah, I got them in the book. All right, let's go to the call. We got two five two two five two area code. Yes. Hey. Peace. Peace. And you know what? The the Omecans or the Mayans, they say when they say hello, they say nigga, give me dollar. <laughs> we know because we win. Oh, Mexico, yeah, Mexican, yeah. 
Yeah, we want to invite everybody. You know, it's March the 21st through the 25th. The Cruise to the Pyramids is going to be brought to you by the Healing Wings Institute, where the sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. I love the solar phallic energy over there. Remember, God, how the peninsula, how the um, latitudinal and the latitudinal lines came together, and we became more psychic yep. and it, high energy, you know? So a space to go and enhance. Um, it's sort of like a um, like a blowing in the phone. But um, it, it was just beautiful. We definitely we went before so we can share it with y'all. So I'm excited. Oh, and we'll be, also, we'll be also passing out some flyers at the SETI and Brother Polite debate. So we definitely want to go so we can laugh, you know, and <laughs> be amongst the energy of our people. We look so beautiful when we come together. So I just, I can't wait. It's December the 9th. So we'll be there too. Right, but for the cruise, like my wife was saying, is March 21st through the 25th, and I'm going to reserve your rooms now. It's only a hundred dollar deposit. Once again, it's only a hundred dollar deposit, and you don't have to finish, and um, you don't have to pay out the rest of them until January the 5th. All right, and we're pretty sure that they'll probably give you an extension, but uh, we'll find out more about that at a later time. But going to reserve your rooms now and come on on this cruise with us because um, you think we dropping information now. Um, on this radio, wait till you see this um, in person. You ain't, you ain't going to believe this shit. Absolutely, right? absolutely. And we also chose March the 21st because it's a tourist attraction. See, our ancestors built the Chichen Itza Pyramid, and the sun will ride up the back of the serpent, the kundalini energy, if you would, and then it'll come to the center pillar, which is symbolic to your Christy or your crown chakra, Opening and awakening. You got to be in that energy, and the best person to be in that energy with is Dr. Asado Ali New El Bay. I'm just so excited. Um, so if you can make it happen, just know the ancestors will make it happen. It's March the 25th. That's almost six months away. So let's make, make it happen. Make it happen. <laughs> Yeah, and if Thanks you need not. some money making um, opportunities, you know to come to your girl because I got all sorts of stuff, to, you know, that we can probably talk through and see what's perfect for you. Yeah, right. Oh, I know. I know. I already know. You sure do, guys. <laughs> I appreciate you. He he talking about the um, gold and silver opportunity. Tell four, and you get you, you can walk out the door with your silver and more. So well, that's what that's what we are working on right now. <laughs> Me and all the brother, brother Yada. Brother Yadavay, I say. Alright, we're, we're gonna go to the co- everybody stay on, we're gonna go to area code three three six, area code three three six. Peace. 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 What's going on everybody? Um Brother Lim, I got a question. Uh this this is Robert from uh Greensboro. Peace, but, bro. Uh, <clears throat> what's going on? All right. Um at at night. <clears throat> At night, I tend to uh, lay down and do my breath, you know, try to focus on my breath, like, before I go to sleep. Mm -hmm. But I have these, uh, like, real vivid dreams. Like, I done had, like, multiple. Like, one of them, I was coming from the Pallades. Um, The other one, I was, like, chilling at my eye house, and it was like something had appeared out of the sky. And then, like, it was, like, two or three suns. Like, it seemed like I was, like, a lot of, you know, different places, but I'm just confirming that that does work when you focus on your breathing and when you put your mind to it. No, no doubt. I mean, um, it sounded like you was lucid dreaming, in which that means you're conscious, in which that means that your consciousness was located at the back of the head, which is the, at the medulla oblongata area, you know. Um, when it's located at the frontal area of the head, in the what is called the right articula, um, that's when you have an out of body experience, you know, in which that you actually go into what is called the astral plane. So it's two areas in the brain in which that give those um, particular um, sensations, you know. And you're saying that it seems so real, then that would probably be lucid dreaming, which means that your consciousness is at the back of the head at the medulla oblongata. Hmm. Um, so that means that actually you was dealing with some past lives um, issues. Okay. Oh, okay. Cause that, I mean, it's that, man, it just be real, mm-hmm. man. Right. Well, you know, the Pleiades, you know, you already knew who you was there. And then the um, two to three sons, of course, that is um, Sirius. You know, um, Sirius has um, Polo Tolo, Ziggy Tolo, and then also Emiya. You know, so 
you know, that's the two, you know, the main two that they talk about series A, series B, which is Polo Tolo and Ziggy Tolo. But then they rarely talk about series C, which is, on which they just found in 1995, verifying what the Dogons have been saying for thousands of years, you know what I'm saying, which is Imiya. So you said two or three um, stars. So obviously those were the two or three stars that you were talking about. So you was journeying through obviously the Pleiades, also the Star Constellation series. All right. Good to know. Oh yeah. Well, that's what the Dogon said that we actually came from. Is um, serious. Yeah, that's powerful. Also, too, God, and also for everyone who's listening, thank you for sharing that. God, I'm gonna have to get you a microphone because your energy when you be coming to the phone, bringing your wisdom, it's like you can feel the chi coming through the phone too, and it sounds like wind. And I know ain't no wind in there with you. No. But I'm gonna have to get you a microphone. But God, you can um you could do when is your birthday? Uh June second. Okay, so I would to everybody too, you could do your numerology and then also do your destiny number to see why you came here. I will also look up the Chiron energy. That deals with like why are you even drawn to this information, you know? And then um you know, then it will also help break down, too, what your dreams are, why they're so vivid, what planetary influences are causing it. Because I know right now with Mercury being in retrograde, personally, we're getting a whole lot done, you know? Right, so, right. Yeah, yeah, because I had read about um, Mercury and all these different planets when, when they um, move and shift their alignments. It's like bouncing off energy, hitting the Earth, and and certain people, you know, that corresponds to that. But yeah. yeah, yeah. June the second. Okay. Well, I appreciate it. Well, we appreciate you too, brother. Appreciate you coming on and sharing that info with us. Oh yeah, brother Lane. I'm I have a, something else right quick that uh that I am gonna get in contact with you about. Uh, okay. I was reading your book about the uh, reclamation. Right. Okay, bro. Well, we here. Whenever you're ready. Okay. All and right, also, bro. too, thank you so much, um, too, that reminded me that we just put together a gold fund fund for um, the United <laughs> Washington Building Fund. Mm-hmm. I'm just so excited. Um, we just had our uh, donation coming today, and it was just, you can tell that it's appreciation. And so we can't wait. We are so excited about just manifesting everything. If you need to get that email, please email us at royalhouse777 at gmail.com. That's R O Y L, royalhouse777 at gmail.com. And um, also, you can look on Aline's Facebook page, too. Will do. This is our 11th annual. I'm so excited about the cruise, y'all. It's our 11th annual um, United Washita Conference. So we come together and we show out. We have a great time. I can't wait to meditate with y'all. Make sure y'all bring y'all um, offerings for the ancestors because you will be traveling <laughs> the seven seas, whatever. So, you know, just just um, be on point. Bring your prayers. Um, do your fasting and um and make it happen. Let's definitely make it happen. I'm just really excited. We're going to do Qigong and Tai Chi together and um, you name it. You know, it's just it's beautiful. And bring your children. That's the that's the best part. You know, and um, um, don't worry about if you ain't got no passport. Bring your state ID if you got one or um, or your birth certificate or your live claim birth. Bring it all. You know, just, just br- also bring you. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. So we got any more questions in the queue, guys? Um, no. Well, y'all know um, it's ten minutes after five, so I'm gonna finish putting doing dinner together. And it's nice talking to y'all. Nice talking to you too, guys. All right, peace. All right, you bring your head up out of here. Thank you. <laughs> peace, baby. And um, we get ready to head up out of here, and um. Brother L, you got any closing remarks before we go? Uh, yeah, I was um, um, well, yeah, closing remarks. Well, brother, um, just to tell the sister that man, Yada Baby is still working on the uh, the gold and silver, trying to get some brothers and sisters in on it so we can get our silver, one hundred twenty-five dollars worth of silver back, and uh, also uh, <clears throat> we are we did receive the papers that you sent. 
Okay. They have the information. Right. On the executive letters. Right. And we both got copies. We both was uh, at the library yesterday. Okay. And we uh we we we're currently now we're studying uh, studying them right now. Okay. As we speak. Sound yeah. good. Sound good. So we can hurry up and study uh, and study them and study them and read them, read them, so we won't make any kind of mistakes. So we right. can send them off. Okay. You know, so some one to the IRS, one to the you know whoever else we need to send them to. No doubt. Sound good to me, brother. I'm glad that yes. you're um, definitely doing your research on that. Yes, sir. And um, yes. we get ready to go. Head out. First World Order Radio. Finally. Finally. We are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in levels in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Burn. Proceeding levels in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Burn. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. Burn. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Burn. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories, shit that works.